on the front porch singing old familiar song. The tractor's in the barn and the pastor's freshly mown. Looking through the screen door, the aroma draws you in to the heart of the home where old memories begin. because I never wear polka dots on the air, but I bought me some polka dot napkins and I thought I might buy me a polka dot shirt to go with it. My friend Hans Ruford is here with me today. Three weeks after a very successful surgery. Yeah, three weeks. And and I will just tell y'all, he's not gonna show you what he just showed me. <laughs> you don't wanna see it. But he truly was chopped, smothered, covered, sliced, diced, all of that was done to you. Was your surgery completely successful? Yeah, there, you know, there's one area right behind my sternum that we were watching uh, that we didn't address. Mm -hmm. And it, it's kind of like it goes my, I mean, not to get too graphic, but, you know, they replumbed me entirely. Right. Yeah. And it looks like for some reason somebody put it in a 90 degree turn. So when I swallow, there's an area right behind my sternum that for some reason goes sideways. But there was more risk in trying to get to that right now than, so far, knock on wood, it's not causing any problems. So it's yeah. just something we have yeah. to watch. Yeah. But um, all of the problem areas were removed, and I think we talked about it the last time I was on here. If you think of it like a garden hose, I had a, I had a section of hose that was not only tangled, it was frayed. It was basically a bad section of hose. Mm -hmm. And so prior going prior to going into this surgery, we didn't know is there enough other hose to be able to take a fresh piece and replace that bad hose, or do they have to try to repair that hose? Yeah. And luckily when they got in, I had plenty. I don't say plenty like we can do this again and again and again, no. but I had enough for this particular surgery for them to take a brand new piece um, and move it to that location and remove all of the problem points. So it was still a pretty long surgery, but everything from the surgeon's point of view was, was successful. Well, and the idea that you literally, eight hours surgery, yeah, is I think that about right? Yeah. Okay, after eight hours of surgery, you were looking pretty rough, but immediately were you feeling a little bit better? Um, I, was, I, ha I wasn't allowed to swallow anything for almost a solid week. So I couldn't tell a difference other than, and, and plus I just had surgery. So no, afterwards yeah, yeah. I was pretty miserable. Uh, and so you weren't sure at first. No, did no. I did I, I mean, do this crazily? Is it going to work? The surgeon felt confident because again, as as the plumber, he could see that the plumbing looked good, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, but we we knew that there was still a little bit of an internal bleed. Um, my blood level dropped to that of like an infant. Uh, it should be around 14, 16, and it dropped down to a six. Wow. Um, which is wow. really, that's what it was when I went to the hospital back in 2005. Yeah. So yeah, when I mean, you left here yep. and literally yeah, drove almost myself didn't and, make it. Yeah. Uh, so. I ended up having to have two units of blood transfused, which I'm on this new mission of donate blood, people donate blood. You, uh, you have no idea how many people you mm -hmm, helped mm -hmm. by donating blood or sure. platelets or plasma. Um, it, it, it comes in handy. Uh, so I, I think I would have survived if I hadn't have had it, but I'd probably still be in the hospital. So yeah. super important to donate blood. Uh, so yeah, everything. Uh, when I was finally able to, uh, to they have a they have a, an interesting system at MD Anderson where they don't just bring you food; you order, and then it's like room service. Mm -hmm. So of course, at first I had the clear liquids, and it was so exciting oh, to be yes. able to go. Oh, I can get a popsicle <laughs> and a uh, yes. you know uh, an apple juice or whatever it was. So that was exciting. Uh, and they had a Chick Fil A in the downstairs, so I got a Chick Fil A sweet tea, which is a big, big oh, deal yeah, for me too. Oh yeah, that's a big deal. So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, so everything seemed to work. Going back to 2005, the first thing they let me have was a green Jolly Ranchers um, hard candy, like mm -hmm. the green apple or whatever, mm -hmm. and we saw it come out of the, <gasps> one of the drainage tubes. So we knew that there was a problem. Like So oh this God. time we were watching the tubes going, okay, nope, yeah. everything seems to be everything good. Everything went. So okay. everything's intact, and 
Um, they did, speaking of tubes, I am sporting some hardware, which I just showed you, yeah. and I won't. Yeah. It's, it's not necessarily gross. But it's, it's, it's shocking. It's basically your food. Yeah. That's your nutrition. Yeah, I mean, I can still eat, uh, and I do, but there's no way that I would be able to eat enough to be able to gain significant weight. Right. And my weight dropped down to 126, right. I think, while I was in the hospital, and I should be a 160, 180. Yeah. Um, so I have you here today so I can rub some fat on I'll you. I'll take it. <laughs> and now that I have a, I have a I have tube, today, so we can liquefy it, fat put it straight in. Uh, I, so I worried about that because you did get dangerously yeah, low. Really skinny, yeah. which affects everything. It affects, you know, um, it, it, there's no cushioning. So everything mm -hmm. hurts. Everything, every time I move, I feel it. And um, I have a bit of osteoarthritis from, the, uh, from all the radiation that I had. And, you know, I don't notice it when I'm at a decent weight. But when, mm -hmm. I'm, when I get real skinny, mm -hmm. you can even see my, in my back, the, you can see the bones right. popping out. Right. So, uh, and I start to notice it actually, they call this temporal wasting. And for the first time, I started, I were reminding myself of Sonya. Like I could see, yes. Yes. I could see the similarity yep. from when yep. she was very ill, yep. um, when my face gets that thin, yep. you know. Uh, but again, there's no way, I have no storage, so there's no way for me to really fatten up without the aid of a feeding tube. And, and so many people, in fact, I met somebody at the farmer's market a couple of weeks ago, they feel like that if the doctor says we need to put you on a feeding tube, they feel like that means this is the end. Yeah. It's not, yeah. because at the end of your life, they, don't, they aren't going to They don't care. No, yeah. I mean, they might give you an IV slight nutrition with TPN or whatever they call it, but they're not going to worry about fattening you up mm -hmm. if they think this is the end. So if anything, it's a bonus because while I sleep from basically you know, nine at night until seven in the morning, I'm getting 2000 calories automatically. There's a little mm -hmm. pump that it's a, it looks like a milkshake. Mm -hmm. You remember Arby's used to have a Jamocha milkshake. Yes. That's, yes. that's what color it is. So it looks like <laughs> yeah. a Jamocha milkshake. Yeah. And it, uh, I don't think it tastes like that because I don't know because it goes in mm -hmm. below my tasting area. Uh, but it goes straight into my jejunum or into my intestines. And while I'm sleeping, 60 milliliters an hour is going through. And mm -hmm. over the course of the night, I get roughly 2,200 wow. calories. Well, he's going to prepare some food today for us. And this is the calorie content of Bananas Foster is pretty high. Could you eat a few bites of Bananas Foster? Are there certain things you have to stay away I, from? I basically have to act like I'm a diabetic okay. um, because... The body is pretty smart at regulating. I mean, the, the normal human body, you know, if you, if you eat sugar, it's going to release insulin, and it's very good at dealing with that. Diabetes, of course, is a disease where you lose the ability to, to mm -hmm. deal with that. Right. Well, my, like, everything is still geared towards the 100% Hans, and so it releases too much insulin for my reduced system, my edited mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. So I can eat very small quantities of sweet, and really, if I eat plenty of protein ahead of it, that kind of buffers me. And it's the same with uh, insoluble fiber. And I don't want to get too technical, but um, fiber helps regulate your, your blood sugar. Mm -hmm. So um, I just have to be careful. Um, you know, so it, it is dangerous. If I eat too much, I'll go into hypoglycemia and I start to get dizzy and confused. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I have to just find the nearest flat surface and, and lay down. And that's why we're sitting down today here. We're going to be standing up in a few minutes as you prepare food. But I knew I, I know you have limits, and, oh, and you're going to have to adjust and live with these limits. But yeah. you're not letting the limits slow you down. Was it true the day after you got back from the hospital, you went to the farmers market? Oh yeah, yeah. I was. Uh, we, we, uh, crazy. He's well, crazy. Well, I mean, <laughs> even after the it's crazy <laughs> after the surgery. So the surgery was done, you know, nine o'clock at night, and I slept until about two in the morning. And by three in the morning, I was walking in the in the hospital. Not far, and not very solid. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I mean, it was that was important to me to yeah. get up and, yeah. and walk. Yeah. yeah. Um, but no, the, and same with the. We, I thought I was going to stay an additional four or five days in Texas, not in the hospital, but in their adjacent hotel. Mm -hmm. um, but my doctor knew that I wanted to get home in time for the farmers market. Now I didn't I didn't work that farmers That's market, funny. but I was there yeah. saying hi to everybody and yeah. getting gentle hugs from yeah. everybody. Yeah. 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 Um, and today it was it. important to you to be here and to say thank you because at, yes, on the shoestring at the last minute you started preparing food and I started marketing your food. And it was just as simple as putting out a shout out on Facebook yep. and then all of a sudden the orders for lemon pies were coming in like crazy. The lemon pies and then we also had some kraut. Uh, the, the kraut, which I'm still making kraut. We, uh, I made a batch. It takes about two and a half, three weeks for it to make. You can't mm -hmm. really rush that. Mm -hmm. And I, before I left for Texas, I was up till after midnight not packing. I was, well, yeah, I was packing cabbage into my, mm -hmm. into my uh, the urn there. So 
It is, it is such a magic thing, and I told myself, this is my welcome home present for when I get back, and the first thing I did was I ran down the basement, not run, but I went <laughs> to the basement. Yeah. Uh, I still have a problem with stairs, so I can go around the house and go in the ground yeah. level. Yeah. Uh, and it was just perfect, and what a difference between the stuff that you buy in the grocery store and the stuff that you make. I mean, even if you make it at home, uh, but I love to add a little extra things like cauliflower or radishes or carrots or this time the batch that I just uh, sold out of yesterday, uh, I put apples in there. And wow. I was I wanted a little bit of sweetness from the apples, but I was worried that they would turn to mush. They, they stayed crispy and crunchy and, uh, but you know, the, the crowd that I'm doing has to be refrigerated. And so once you, once it ferments and you put it in the refrigerator, you're not killing the bacteria, you're just sort of putting it to sleep. Mm -hmm. So it's not gonna sit there and get mushy or, or you know, continue to, to ferment. And, and you know, I'd never seen you sell the kraut and I was standing there as people were, and they're like, I need a, you know, and they're just reaching and grabbing and I'm like, what is it with this kraut? Because it didn't even look like what I'm used yep. to is yep. just the homemade old timey kraut. Yep. Did you come up with this combination yourself because so, you're eating well? Yeah, and um, I, it is, I've been calling it half kraut because that was the, what my dad called Sonia and I, because mm -hmm. we were half German, half Georgian, mm -hmm. and so he would say, these are my and half. And I will just be honest with y'all, that is one heck of a combination. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I totally <laughs> acknowledge that. We got your that. sweet tea going on with your sauerkraut. That is, I, I always tell people I'm half grits, half sauerkraut, you know, yeah, so. Yeah. Um, it is, uh, but so there's a, there's a Korean version of sauerkraut called kimchi. And what I like about kimchi is it's usually crunchier, it's usually bigger pieces, and so I started thinking, I want to make something that is, because there are a lot of people that just don't like sauerkraut because they're not cabbage fans. Mm -hmm. And again, it can be kind of overwhelming and if it's just cabbage. So whereas kimchi, they do cabbage and it's usually Napa cabbage, but they also do carrots and they do peppers and they do beans. Uh, and they do all these other fermented vegetables and they're wonderful, but they're still crunchy and they're still identifiable and very succinct. And so I wanted to make something that was sort of half kimchi, half sauerkraut. Mm -hmm. And since I was a half kraut anyway, so I'm <laughs> calling it sort of half kraut. Yeah. Uh, and, but I'm also not fermenting it so long that it ever gets mushy. So it's still crispy, it's mm -hmm. still, uh, you know, identifiable. It doesn't turn into like chow chow where it's a mush or whatever, which I like chow chow too. Mm -hmm. um, there's people going, what is a chow chow? I love chow chow. Oh my God, it's good. I love chow chow. Oh um, gosh, I love it. Yeah, me too. Yeah, in fact, I, now, I have might. you ever had pear relish? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love pear relish. And, and That's can, like my forever favorite thing. You can make a fermented version. So by fermented, really what you're doing is uh, and we talked a little bit about this for the Facebook crowd, but the bacteria that are in kimchi and sauerkraut and yogurt too, for that reason, you know, for that fact, and there's a new uh, kind of popular drink called kombucha, and they have in them bacteria that really we need, and we have them in our digestive system, and they, the more and more research about our entire immune system really lives in our, in our gut. And if you kind of start, and I hate talking about the things that you shouldn't eat, but if you've been eating sort of badly for a while, you start establishing a colony of bacteria that make you feel bloated and that's where the sort of gas can come from and you have bad skin and your hair might look uh, limp and, and kind of greasy. But once you start eating the good stuff, you really do change your entire everything. And I think mm -hmm. that's a lot of where my energy comes from mm -hmm. is I've had to learn that if I put bad fuel in my machine, my machine doesn't work. But if I put good fuel in my machine, I've got tons of energy. So even though I'm probably 60% of the person I used to be physically, I've had so many mm -hmm. things removed, I think I get more done by noon than most people do all day. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, now well, I, and the fact that you're your father's child, well, that true. has a little bit I, to do with it. Well, so. and I have this latent guilt. If I'm sitting still for any amount of time, <laughs> and you're the same way, I mean, yeah. you, you know, oh, yeah. there's stuff to do. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. so if I sit around, I feel guilty. I feel like yeah. I'm, I'm any minute my dad's gonna come around the corner and say, do you need a project? <laughs> yeah. And I, I remember like specifically, we had this little Little room and you might remember upstairs when you came to the top of the stairs there was my room Sonia's room was on the left and then there was this weird little half room just past my room we called it the cat room mm -hmm. because that's mm -hmm. where the cats slept and yeah, yeah. we had a little sofa in there and a little TV the old yeah, time with yeah, the two knobs I remember it. Yeah. and that's where we had our old Atari 2600 uh -huh. the original uh -huh. Atari home system yep. and uh, you couldn't pause the game back then like you played it or you didn't play it mm -hmm. and Sonia and I would be playing Frogger or Pac-Man or whatever it was and my dad would come in on a Saturday saying, do you guys need a project? And we're like, no. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, but let's come outside. I need the bamboo cut or I yeah, need the yeah. whatever, oyster shucked or what have you. Yeah. So I still feel like if I'm sitting still that he's gonna come around the corner yeah, and say, you yeah. need a project. Well, it's interesting. I was showing a house the other day and we were talking about baseboards and, and this and this and this. And um, they had two teenage children and they said, you know, um, you know, we need to address issues on the baseboards and this. 
And I said, well, let me tell you something. I said, as a kid, I made the mistake one time of telling my mother I was bored. Uh -oh. And she found the bucket and she filled it with warm sudsy water with Parsons sudsy ammonia. And I did all the baseboards oh. in the house and I never once said I was bored again. So my mother may have instilled something in me. I think I was about 11 years old and I never ever said I'm bored again. Now, to this day, do you still notice if baseboards are crazy? Oh, I, it drives me yeah. crazy. Yeah. It drives me nuts yeah. because and it's so obvious. And when you're, when you're showing a house, when you're selling a house, yes. Yeah, oh, those yes. are the it details It drives me crazy because that's the detail work. And I remember my mama and she was a stickler for it. I yep. iron pillowcases and, and I always, I still, you know, I'm an I'm a ironaholic and, and I just like things like sure. that. But it's what's instilled in you as a child. And, and that's but as what a child, you me. probably hated that, thinking yeah. I never want to see a baseboard oh, again. Yeah, and now I'm like, Okay, you need to you need to address your baseboards. You need to address this. I am that way with uh, geraniums because you know how the geraniums yes. always lined the walkway, yes. and then we yes. had them hanging. Well, yes. my job as a kid was to deadhead them. You know, yes. pick them off. Yes, so they'll produce and again. I got stung so many times because, especially over at the hotel building. Um, they were hanging above my head at the time. Of course, I'm tall now, but I would have to sort of reach without seeing what in was the in bugs, there, and yeah. they were, I got stung by because the paper <laughs> wasps would be up in there. Yeah. So I swore as a kid I'm never going to have geraniums, and of course I have and geraniums. Yeah. And even when we go out somewhere shopping or out to eat, and I see geraniums, I still deadhead them. Mm -hmm. And Amy's like, "Those are not yours." I'm like, "Yeah, I know, but they need <laughs> to be dead here." <laughs> so I've got that. Uh, well, you know, um, emotionally. You're having a tough time getting through the fact that as you turned the Woodbridge Inn over to the new family that was purchasing it, yep. everything was a done deal, we thought. And there was a loan in progress and yep. you thought everything was going to come together. So when you went in for surgery, you were not prepared for what happened to you just days before when you were locked out of the Woodbridge no, Inn. No, man, and I, the cops who were even called on me, which yes, was, uh, well, yes, was pretty great. Yes, I was yeah. in there actually just uh, trying to take the fish out of the aquarium because they, they had to go somewhere. Yep. They're in a bucket in my backyard right now. Not a bucket, it's a oh, little wow. pond. But I, um, you know, emotionally, you were not prepared. we have already sort of, we knew that I physically couldn't do the Woodbridge Inn. And so we've been trying for, for a number of years to sort of passed the torch and we've been taken advantage of a few times. We had some, you know, some bad deals where people love the idea of it, but then when they got in there to do the work, they're like, they weren't willing yeah, they to work. Weren't, they weren't no, really, they no. wanted to. And they think you can hire everything yeah. done and no, that is you so cannot. far from you the cannot. truth. Yeah. So, you know, the, the family that we, I, I feel like cherry picked, um, uh, you know, had worked with us for years. There, there were several generations there and they knew what needed to be done. And um, we actually, uh, we had, sort of several checkpoints so even six months ago we you know are we sure we're on the right track because uh -huh. we um i didn't really make this public but we had an offer to turn the woodbridge in into a hospitality school uh -huh. and they wanted to name it after my dad and it was going to be basically the rupert school of hospitality where it would be run as a restaurant but it would be managed you know by, by students. students you know yeah. so they would yeah. work and get Absolutely. their accreditation and and when you told um, me that it made me so sad because that was an opportunity you sure. missed because you thought the other deal was already done well, yeah, and we, we, we turned that down because we had a contract um, and you know at the end of the day they were not able to get a loan yeah. and there's all sorts of rumors it's amazing while I was in the hospital when I came back there's all these rumors that that I wouldn't sell it to them or that we had this predatory lender um, but Honestly, the, the lender did what he had to do. He actually mm -hmm. gave us an extra month and a half to try to make it work, but they weren't able to get their loan. So, um, uh, you know, just yesterday I was in Home Depot and somebody was telling me this wild rumor about, you know, that I wouldn't uh, do this or whatever. And I, I guess everybody sort of needs to know that we did everything. I mean, we've been over backwards to make sure that they could because yeah, we felt absolutely. like this was the perfect, this was the perfect answer. Uh, and with us living next door, we were there to help if they needed help. and. So I don't want to villainize anybody or, or like I said, the lender wasn't predatory. Now they were from up north and so they might have been a little more abrasive than uh -huh. we would be at times. But uh -huh. at the end of the day, that's the deal. The bills the deal, are due, yeah. you pay your bills yeah, or you, yeah, exactly. it doesn't work. Yeah. So we, uh, it was definitely uh, all of a sudden, three, two, one, boom, the doors are locked. Um, we knew the locksmith really well, great guy. And so he, he kind of gave us a couple extra hours to get our personal belongings out of there. Um, which we'd, we'd sort of already kind of done anyway. It was just the little things. I mean, little, like we had a, I had a Piggly Wiggly sign that, that we got the day the Piggly Wiggly closed. They gave me one of their signs. Mm -hmm. I had that hanging in the men's room. And, mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. and actually the, in the men's room, the sink was made out of my dad's desk. And like the ladies room sink was made out of one of the doors. And you know, like there's so many little 
everything in there has a has a significance. I mean, yes. the yeah. weight for the men's room door, if you've ever been yeah. to Woodbridge, it had a self-closing door because my dad, it drove him crazy. Yeah. People kept leaving it open. Yeah. So you yeah. got a pulley and, a, and yeah. an old weight. Yeah. So, you know, things like that. Do I take it? Do I not take it? You know, so um, yeah. we had an old Wurlitzer piano that a customer had given to us. And so I was able to give that to one of our uh, employees that was a great piano player and so it, it really was stuff that wouldn't mean anything to the to a bank but it, mm -hmm. it had a lot of sentimental value right. you know to right. us so and you know the hardest thing for me was when you were talking about it and and you said you know Heidi is four years old you were four years old when you went yeah. there Heidi has grown up in that room. Oh, she loves and to, to go explain to a four-year-old yeah. that you can no longer go on this property yeah. is impossible to do. Well, she's still, every day we walk by, we walk into town a lot, and she walks by, is the Woodbridge open today? Is it going to open today? So she understands that it's for sale, mm -hmm. and uh, she actually even said to me, somebody good is going to buy the Woodbridge, and, and that's still my hope. It and it knock on wood, I'm actually working with four people. I'm trying so hard to put something together. Nobody has been able to do it bluntly yeah. because the cost is too high you know to to take on an old building and you know this sure. when you took it on the cost was too high for you to to do all the things that have to be done yeah. it's an old building yeah. and so when you take on an old building it's like everybody i've shown it to goes oh, well, it's got to have this and it's got to have that. And I'm like, it's worked like this for 50 years. Why does it have to have that now? Well, and, and so, plus, I think there needs to be a bit of a, the, what's the term, a paradigm shift. You know, like, it's one of those things where do you see two phases or do you see a vase, you know what I mean? And see, all of a sudden, once you see it the other way, it's hard to see it, the, you know. It, so it's almost like an, an illusion. And, and what we figured out about a year and a half ago, we actually had a, a, a consulting company to come in and really kind of run the numbers. like. Mm -hmm. And to work as a breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or even a lunch and dinner, the only way that's going to work is with a family. Like, mm -hmm. you know, where you have, like we did, we right. have a husband, wife, and kids, and maybe extended family, where you don't have to have so Each much payroll. Uh, payroll, because yeah. payroll will just, yeah. will just eat you alive. Yeah. Or... Um, or a healthy chef father, yeah, which so, you, you know, were not yeah. after a period of time, yes. and I that mean, was the problem. Well, really, I wasn't from minute one. I mean, from we bought it in 2009, and then I got a brain infection, and then my dad died in 2010, and then I got the second brain infection, and then, you know, it has been nothing but um, this this line of, like, there's no way all this happened to one person. Well, yeah. it did right after I bought the Woodbridge Inn. Next question, are you writing a book? Yeah, let me let me let me get to that. He's got to write a book. On the on the Woodbridge side, though, um, it should be an event space. Yes. Because we've seen several other yes. popular, um, successful, really successful event spaces in the North Georgia area, but not one that has 18 guest rooms mm -hmm. right there on the mm -hmm. property. Mm -hmm. You know, there are others that have it surrounding. Right. But we've got this beautiful property with 18 guest rooms. And so if somebody comes in and doesn't focus on the lunch and dinner aspect, in fact, the restaurant doesn't even have to be a restaurant. You could mm -hmm. have caterers come in and do exactly. the food. That's who, see, the people I'm talking to, that's what they want to do is bring in the stuff, yes. not use that 118-year-old kitchen. That's, that's my thought, not, too. Is yeah, that, yeah, plus, we, we had a lot of things that were grandfathered in because we've had it since 1976 or mm -hmm. five. And so somebody coming in is going to basically have to erase that kitchen and start over. Mm -hmm. So rather than having that expense, let somebody else bring in the food. But, and, but i got to share this with you because other realtors who are involved in the property haven't known its history for 50 sure, years sure. like I did. And I walked in the kitchen and one of them said, oh my God, this kitchen is horrendous. It's so old and it's so, so. And I said, it's been this way for 50 sure. years. I cooked in this kitchen. I cooked on that stove. I used that oven oh, to, they all work. to make cheesecakes. Fantastic. Yeah. Everything worked yeah. fine. But they get this negative feeling about it because it is old. Yeah. But it is tried and true. It it tried, and true tried and true. And also it's a galley kitchen, which some people see as a negative, but to me, you can stand in one place and I can reach everything. everything. I don't have to run anywhere. Absolutely. I mean, so once you're in the kitchen, you, it's almost like yep. getting in a cockpit. Yep. Yep. Everything is at arm's reach. And if yep. it wasn't, you yep. know, then you have to have more staff. So, you, you know, but that's, but that's honestly. It's so weird how people see it differently. And I was standing there looking at that old oven and remembering how many times I brought cornbread out of that oven, how many times I brought New York style cheesecake out of that I oven. I wish that oven would go somewhere else yeah. because if that Vulcan oven, you couldn't, it's they fantastic. don't make them like that anymore. I mean, it's, it's like fantastic. cast iron. I mean, the door yep. weighs more than yep. most, yep. you know, most ovens. Yep. Yep. So yeah, that's, that's one of those things that, um, just Everybody because it's old, it differently. Yeah. yeah, but that, that has become kind of my new, you know, anytime I hear somebody complaining, 
the things we complain about, like, oh, my cell phone keeps losing charge. And I have to think, well, that's a first world really? problem, right? Because there are so many people who don't even have a cell phone, don't have clean drinking yeah, water. Yeah, and yeah. so I, I've kind of been playing that game with my mom. She'd never heard the term first world problem. So I had to explain that to her that every time she complains about something, there's, she's complaining about something that the rest of the world doesn't even have the luxury of mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. having an iPad, yep. you know, or yep. whatever it is. So yep. there's a lot of things you can, if you just stop and slow down, you, there, you can look at a way to find that where it's not yep. something to complain yep. about. Well, right now we're going to take a commercial break and we're also going to do, I'm going to share a four minute DVD. You know, everybody says, uh, you know, you can't do this and you can't do that and you can't do this. We sold, I had a beautiful, beautiful home out in the Hill City area and sold it and lucky enough to move to ball ground into an older, older mobile home. Mm. So I'm into the flipping home thing now. I love to do that. And so I'm working on a project out in the Ranger area. And everybody who looked at this little house said, oh, it's just too much work. And I said, no, let me show you what we did. So we're going to share a DVD cool. of where we walked into. We were buying the perfect property because it had been in Freddie's family for years since the 1880s. He wanted the property. Along with it came an older mobile home. Right. Well, today, it's a very, very nice house. And I live there. And it was amazing to see the difference. So we're going to share a little bit of this video. Cool. And when you're looking, when you're in the market to buy something, you're in the market, don't go over your budget, start with what you can afford, sure. build it up, build some equity, and then move on. And so when people are asking me, well, how did you know how to cut these corners? How did you know how to save this money? It's because I've done five of them. I know how to do this. So I always encourage people, when things get to looking really, really bad, just look around and yep. you can change this drastically. And so we're gonna share a DVD and this does have, um, You'll look at it and go, really? Because that doesn't look like where you live today, but it is exactly where cool. we live today. So we're going to share that, and we're going to give you a little bit of a break. We're going to get ready, and when we come back, we're going to be doing Bananas Foster and Flaming Figs. Yep. Is that right? Yep. Okay. And he's going to try to convince me that you could eat a fig and it could go down. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see that. We'll be back in just a few minutes. So happy, dancing, swinging, laughing at me, smile on my face. It's happiness for days. Uh oh, you are everything I need. Happy ever after will be. Couldn't even dream a better, couldn't even dream a better way. Whether it's
Sports, memories of your first trip to the local Dairy Queen, or your daily visit for a $5 lunch special. The Jasper Dairy Queen has been a part of the community for over 40 years. Locally owned and operated, Jasper DQ is the place where specialty items often become favorites. Burgers, shakes, chicken tenders with yummy dip and gravy, and don't forget the rings and fries. Celebration cakes are always fresh and fast and include the awesome Blizzard Cake. Stop by where folks are always meeting and eating. 515 at Highway 53. Just follow the crowd to the Dairy Queen. Fountain Roofing has been providing excellent service for 35 years. Let Lonnie assist you in choosing the roof perfect for your home and your budget. Commercial or residential, he can handle it all. Fountain Roofing continues to provide quality workmanship and will provide references upon request. At Fountain Roofing, we've got you covered. Call Lonnie at 706-692-6997. That's 706-692-6997. Since 1962, Gilmer Towing has been serving the North Georgia area and would like to say thanks to all of our customers. For over 48 years, Gilmer Towing has carried on a family tradition with an experienced and friendly staff that offers 24-hour damage-free towing, unlocks, and four-wheel drive recovery. So when you're stuck in a ditch, tires flat, or car won't start, give us a call. Local or long hauls, big or small, Gilmer Towing will get them all. Give us a call today at 706-636-4TOW. We've had Alpha Insurance since our first daughter. And when we had quadruplets, <laughs> we really needed Alpha. Now we need our own insurance with great rates, fast claim service, and a local agent we know. And we want to company our kids and grandkids and trust. <laughs> Call Alpha. For the best agents in the business, call Ed Stepp in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high-quality, holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. We are ready right now. We are going to have Hans is going to make my favorite thing for my child's birthday every single year. I didn't have to worry about a birthday cake because Nick always said, because we please have Bananas Foster from the Woodbridge Inn. Tell us a little bit about the ingredients sure. and, and how cool this is and how simple it really is. It, it really how is. how wonderful it is. It's crazy simple and the, the biggest uh, difficulty is your own fear mm -hmm. and more, mm -hmm. so many times people when you're dealing with fire yeah. it is you know that's the thing that kind of makes people you know upset about it so we'll we'll talk through the safe way to do this but we'll also kind of you know talk about the the way you can do this incredibly safe if you don't if the fire scares you you don't have to do it you mm -hmm. basically you can just almost make it's almost like you're making preserves I've done it without doing the alcohol yeah. and it was boring yeah it, boring. Honest, I mean, it, is, it was boring it is nice so, to have that yeah. little bit of a little bit of power yeah. you know yeah. so yeah. That's, that's what we're going to do. And okay. uh, hopefully I've got enough uh, gas in my container here. If not, I've, I've got a backup, but we'll okay. try to do this in one, one slot. So this was always a, a point of argument with my dad and I is that he felt like the sugar had to go in first and then oh, wow. the butter. I feel like the butter had to I go do in too. first. I do too. And, yes. and really, they, they're almost simultaneous. Yeah. Um, but the, the... And you uh, use real butter. Oh, yeah. In fact, I brought... This is, this is from Finland. This is like oh, some serious... Wow. Like, oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. It's like real deal oh, yeah. butter. But oh, yeah. I, uh, I, you don't skimp on the butter. And honestly, I like salted butter because salted mm -hmm. butter is, is, salted. is not so salty. But if you ever had salted caramel, you know, a little salty with yes. a little sweet yep. goes a long way. Yep. So this is... Finlandia salted butter, and I splurged because I figured, you know, why not? So, yeah. uh, life is short. And where did you find this? Oh, this is at Ingles. Oh, you're Believe kidding. it or not, at Ingles, they had uh, Finlandia. I mean, oh it, it, so you'll see there's a few brands of, of European butter, um, and that's, I think it's worth the extra little bit, especially mm -hmm. if you go couponing, and, and I'm and always... And what you've added now is just brown, brown sugar. Brown sugar, and I'm using light brown sugar today because, quite honestly, it's what I had. Uh -huh. uh, but you can use uh, raw sugar, but I do like using some type of a dark sugar because it's got that little bit of a sort of molasses -y yeah, flavor going yeah. on. And what I'm trying to do here is make the sauce. Could I just say that I could lick up everything oh, yeah, in that yeah. pan and right now? I could just lick now the Now listen, you, you might have been there when we used to do this. When my dad would be done, 
you would bring this back, and we would always have a couple oh, yeah. of leftover dinner oh, yeah. rolls from, oh, yeah. you know, that back, you know, oh, yeah. that little table when you first guilty, come in. Guilty as charged. And so we would take <laughs> buttered rolls uh -huh. and then use Whoa. that to wipe the pan, and oh my God, that is good. Oh, yeah. So, uh, I mean, nowhere would you find that on a, on a recipe book, but no. buttered rolls dipped in oh, yeah. bananas faucet. Oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm making what is technically called an emulsion. Uh, but so if you if you do the sugar too fast or if you melt the butter all the way first You won't get a sauce like this, right? And this is almost like you're making caramel, right? Really? I mean, that's that's kind of what we're doing. It's, it's just making a making a sauce there All right, so in go the bananas. We'll do the figs separately. So I know you're not a fig yeah, fan. I just, uh, yeah. Oh my goodness yeah. I would. Uh, my mama loved figs, absolutely loved figs, and she would be so excited that I'm standing that near a fig, so. I have picked probably about 40 pounds this year. Wow. Uh, and that's really off of two trees. And the figs came out of the trees of the house where you live. Oh, yeah, and, that, and yeah. the great thing about that is I picked that tree when I was a kid from Mr. Cartwright, Bill Cartwright. That is wild. And um, he was the first person when I was about 10 or 12 years old that suggested that one day I would live in that house. Uh -huh. Michelle, can you get the ice cream now? Uh, so listen, I uh, sometimes I put a little cinnamon in there, but I make this sugar baby. Oh yeah, which we were is, talking about sugar baby yep. yesterday, and I couldn't remember the content. So it's it. got it does have cinnamon and okay. it's got raw sugar, but it also has ginger and okay. it also has cardamom. And cardamom, yeah, cardamom yeah. has that wonderful sort of floral kind of a flavor. Mm -hmm. uh, now this little trick that I'm doing, you do not have to do. Because uh, I, I I can tell y'all I can't. Wait, do so that. don't worry about yeah, that. I can't so you can do just that. stir it around. I would have it all laying out here on the tablecloth, and people would be out here licking the tablecloth. I so. did that using marble chips. My dad taught me how to mm -hmm. how to flip things in a pan using marble yep. chips. Yeah. If you'll just slide it over here on the side, well you can't go in front of that camera. Come over this way. Yeah, Caleb. Here, give it to Caleb. There you go. Thank you. All right, so this already right now thank is beautiful. Like there's nothing wrong. This is good to eat, it's ready gorgeous. to go. It's gorgeous. And can we get a picture? Have y'all got your cameras in here? Well, tell you what, let me let me flame and then we'll come get us a good picture because this is going to okay. look, it'll look even better. So okay. right now, this is amazing. And you could stop this right now and put this on a piece of pound cake or mm -hmm. whatever. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's a great sauce. Mm -hmm. Now, so for the flaming though, here's the trick is you want to get all of the liquid back towards you. Can you see me backing up because yeah, I, I worked with yeah. his daddy. You know how that goes. <laughs> so all of this comes back towards you and what I'm wanting to do is get this side of the pan crazy hot but also wanted to get it fairly dry. Yeah. Because it's really not the liquid that causes the flame. It's the, the vapor. Yeah. So the vapor is what makes it steam. So to get that vapor, I want it, when it hits the pan, I want it to you yep. know, sizzle. Plus you get the sound of the sizzle. Yeah, yeah. And I use the back of my hand. And then you'll be bald like your daddy. Yeah, that, that was always his joke, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I use the back of my hand to kind of feel. And, it, uh -huh. and when I feel that it's nice and hot, there we're good. Yeah. Okay. So Here we now go, here, guys. But get now listen, ready. here's the safe part, is I'm gonna, when I'm gonna do this away from the fire, I'm gonna put the bottle down and away, and yeah. then I'm gonna bring it back to the flame. Okay. So what I do is I fill the spoon, I go around the pan, I take this away and then I move that forward. <laughs> so that's the dangerous part is if the fire goes into the bottle, yes. that can be explosive. Yes, yes. Um, but I'm literally cooking out all this alcohol. So yeah. I got the kind of. God, that smells so smell good, amazing. No. Oh my gosh. And I use the like I use the spice rum because I like the kind of spiciness of mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. um, but if you had brandy, would work. You know, regular white or clear rum would work. Uh -huh. um, but you again, you need that. You need the pow of the uh, of the alcohol to get the flame. Uh -huh. But if you don't have a bottle laying around, uh, it's okay. You yeah. can still make this, and yeah. it, it is fantastic. Yeah. It we is. did a um, banana foster upside down cake at the farmers market. Uh, right before I left I for the hospital, that, yeah, and it yeah. came out perfectly. We really just did a very similar to a pineapple upside down cake, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, we made the, the made this sauce, put it on the bottom of the pan, and then put the batter over the top. Worked did out you perfectly. Did the alcohol on it? We did, yeah. So I did yeah. exactly like did that. Exactly. Yeah. So okay. Just okay. like that. But again, we burned it out so that if anybody had an issue with it, right? You know, right. I don't want anybody to have an excuse to not eat it. Yeah. Right. And, and that's fine if you don't do alcohol. That's totally fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, but just know, again, the alcohol is gone. Yeah. Yep. I think I went over the edge there a little bit. That Sorry about that. Um, I do not need one. I'm gonna. I'll be the guy licking the pan. Okay. But right, this Caleb. early in the day, I better not have too Yay. much sugar. Plus, I got figs coming up, and I like those better. Yes, he does like figs. Yay. Uh, and the figs are basically the same. So we can talk while I'm cooking the figs, uh -huh. and I'll be a little less instructional about that, uh -huh. so that we can still have a good conversation. And is there a reason to eat figs? Are they good for you? Oh, yeah, you? they're crazy good for you. Now, if um, it's funny because it seems like a lot of my cooking classes, we end up talking about bowels. Uh -huh. And uh, But let's be honest, yeah. if, if you have bowel problems, it's, you, you are miserable. Uh -huh. uh, so if you do have issues yeah. with um, 
with constipation, mm -hmm. figs are great for that. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's kind of the truth of almost any fruit. Okay. You know what I mean? If you if you eat a lot of fruit, it's gonna uh -huh. it's gonna help you go. Yep. Um, but yes, they are high in uh, in all sorts of vitamins. Now the interesting thing in figs is, and we talked about this before. I got one more here, bananas. Okay. The figs are really not a fruit. Uh -huh. They are the flower. Uh, so when you look at a fig, the mm -hmm. inside components, all those little bits and things, are what you would see inside of a flower normally. So, mm -hmm. ooh, mm -hmm. this okay. nice black tablecloth. That's okay. That's okay. Well, yeah, and I, I'm fine. That's five second rule. Eat that. That's right. <laughs> um, so oh. when you look at a fig on the inside, do we have a close up camera going up here. Can there we, we go. can we look at one on this side? Have I don't know. A... There we go. Um, so all of this on the inside. Uh, and I don't want to scare people, but where figs are native to in the Mediterranean, there's a special wasp that actually goes into the fig and it lays its eggs in there. And the little worms, and again, I don't, don't get freaked out because <laughs> we don't have them here, uh, but they pollinate here. this flower on the inside. Uh, so basically think of it as a flower that never opens. Wow. Um, so that's what a fig is. And uh, because of that, it has a lot of nutrition because this is what the plant needs to make the next generation eventually. So uh -huh. the plant is putting all of its energy into making these guys. Wow. And um, it's in the cookbook. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. and, uh, I did do a cookbook. We talked about a book before. Yes, and we talked about your yep. cookbook yesterday. And called we Eat Like share. There's No Tomorrow. Yep. Um, and I, but I, I am working on another one, and Ella's helping me. So uh -huh. um, Ella, my daughter, is a, is a vegetarian. And so we are doing a vegetarian cookbook with suggestions for ways you could add meat to that. Mm -hmm. But almost everybody can figure out how to cook a piece of chicken or a steak or a shrimp or whatever. So mm -hmm. we're gonna focus on the kind of stuff that I kind of need people to focus on, on, on the foods that are gonna give you the strength and energy to kind of you know, help you get through the day. Mm -hmm. uh, but also the values um, that I kind of love to talk about with food and mm -hmm. you are what you eat and talking about you know, getting the fuel in your body. Well today, I are uh, biscuit and gravy and tenderloin. Because <laughs> at 5.45 this morning oh, yeah. I woke up and I just had this horrible idea that I needed to get up and make biscuits and gravy and tenderloin. Well, and so I did, and so there was something really country that came out in me today but, but, because I thought I gotta do this. And I'm a big believer that if you're if you're genuinely craving something like that, sometimes your body needs that. Yep. You know, sometimes you need that. Well, whatever I had one it is. biscuit and gravy and, and one piece of tenderloin, and then I was done. It was it was great. It was fantastic. It was easy to make. And uh, now the figs come. Are they always in August? Is um, there a no. Well, so place where um, they, they do. They start kind of June through the first frost. And different varieties do um, kind of have a different season. Now, mm -hmm. these are called Celeste, and Celeste is probably the most common fig that you find around here. And my friend Zach um, at the farmer's market, he had his a full two weeks before mine were ripe. Really? So it just kind of depends on the microclimate that you're in and, mm -hmm. and, you know, how they are. Now, figs love calcium, which is why uh, at the Woodbridge our figs trees are so huge because my dad would take all the marble dust from his <gasps> sculptures and put it, and put it around it. the fig tree. So oh, you can do wow. that with, um, with the lime that you buy, like pelletized lime or powdered uh -huh. lime, uh -huh. because all that is is marble dust anyway. Yep. So, wow. Uh, now I'm barely cooking the figs because they, they really do get soft quick. Mm -hmm. So all I did is really just get them in the sauce and uh -huh. I'm going to fire this guy up and then we will be good. What did I do with this? Oh, you get, I, I got see, it. you snuck the rum over I there. I did it because uh -huh. I, I was, I was afeard. <laughs> you was afeard, well. <laughs> I was afeard. Uh, oh, the, I guess the other trick is um, the bigger the pan, the better. Yes. So I'm using kind of a ridiculous pan for this small amount that I'm cooking, but uh -huh. again, what I'm wanting is the surface area so that I get this, the vapor. Right. Uh, isn't that like an old Southern expression, I'm getting the vapors? You're getting the vapors. Yeah. That's so right. That's right. That's all right, that's here right. we go. On the fire again. <laughs> right, here we go. So, let's go in the spoon yeah. and go around the pan. I move this out of the way and then woo, You can feel that. I yeah, mean, that's I warm all of a sudden. <laughs> I feel it. Yeah. All right, so <clears> off <throat> with the fire. And this is the kind of thing, in Atlanta, you'd pay 10, 12 bucks per person sure, for sure. flaming figs. Um, wow, and Jen likes figs, right? So Jen's gonna get figs. Well, good. Caleb, and do you wanna try figs? No, I'm fine, listen to that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is. The, the, so there are some people that think that figs are poisonous until you cook them. That is not the case oh, at well. all. You can eat them straight up. I got ice cream in it. Oh, you're gonna, here, I got your fresh one. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I got your fresh one. Enjoy that one. All right, watch, yeah. watch. I'm standing here with Hans. Uh -oh. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, don't be it's polite now. It's, it's hot. Yeah. One night it's hot. Woodbridge, though, no, for about 15 of us, you had a huge pan. Oh, yeah. And it looked like the whole room was going That's up. That's the way to do it. The bigger the pan, the better. There's a great picture of me somewhere with a big old uh, fire that we did. And the, the trick there was I had nothing in the pan. All I did was get a really hot pan and pour the rum in there, and it did a, <laughs> it did a massive thing. Yum, yum, yum. Well, and this would be okay, great preserves. Here. No, I can't. Come here. I can't. Now, try, try the <laughs> sauce try from it. I'll try, try the sauce. Try the sauce. Try I'll try the sauce. Yeah, the, because the, the flavor is the subtly sauce. different. No and way. you can mix them, too. Yeah. If you did figs and bananas in the same pan, that would be great. Yeah. My mother yeah, would love this. Are, Mama would are, love this. No, I think they're perfect. So, mm, they're perfect. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Okay, guys, we're going to take a quick break while we clean up a little bit of this. And I want to share, because Hans and Rhonda were doing Flavors of the South, it gave me the nerve to do a couple of shows with her, which eventually led to Heart of the Home. You yep. have on a Heart of the Home apron. Heart I know. It's a, I feel like I'm wearing a miniskirt. It's yeah. A, yeah but. Heart of the Home, uh, we started in Atlanta, Greenville, Birmingham, Orlando. We traveled. We did everything we possibly could to promote great Southern simple cooking. Sure. I said it has to be simple, Southern, and scrumptious, and that's what it's about. And today, we're, when we come back, we're gonna to talk to you about some of the things that Hans is doing that are simple, scrumptious, mm. and not really Southern, but they're so good for you. So we're gonna talk about the healthy bowls when we come back in just a couple of minutes. We'll be right back. With speeds up to 150 meg, ETC and Ignite delivers more, more, more. More shopping, more music, more learning, more streaming. More speed to power smartphones, movies, and streaming video. More speed for more devices in your home. And more room in your budget with ETC's low pricing and bundled discounts. Get the fastest internet around with Ignite's new 150 meg. More speed, more savings. Call ETC today. Smith, the University of Georgia. Today we have John Davis, former Georgia Tech All-American, Frank Ross, captain of the Bulldogs 1980 National Championship team in a Subway showdown. Subway. How many Subways does that Singleton own? He just up at number 17. He started in my hometown of LJ. Yeah, but he graduated from the University of Georgia. Uh, hey guys, who's hungry? It looks like Subway and Singleton Food Services Incorporated the winner again. Chevy runs deep in Canton at Bill Holt Chevrolet. Deeper selection, deeper discounts, and we're letting everybody know it. Not just Chevy buyers in Atlanta. Chevy buyers in Blairsville, Blue Ridge, Jasper, and Ella J. If you're out there, we're right here with one huge selection at Truck HQ. Always get our lowest prices and friendliest service. Online, BillHoltGM.com. Because when you're talking trucks, you're talking Truck HQ. When Mike leaves town, it's a little scary. You never know who might be outside. But we feel safer inside knowing our home is being monitored by a local company. I can check our alarm from just about anywhere. So when we get home, I know it's safe. Get peace of mind for your family with a local company. Switch your current security monitoring to ETC Security and get six months monitoring free. Call ETC Security now or visit etcsecurity.com to learn more. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. In today's changing world, some things should never change. Time-honored compassionate services are what families have come to know with Roper Funeral Home. Our professional and courteous staff offers traditional services, cremations, as well as advanced funeral planning, which relieves the burden from those we love. Hello, I'm Kevin Roper. If you have any questions about the services we provide, we invite you to give us a call, stop by, or better yet, ask a family who has used our services. Uh, you can freeze the figs first. If you have an abundance of figs, freeze them on a sheet pan, then put them in a Ziploc bag, and then when you have enough frozen ones, that's what you would do. And again, Mary Jane Reed um, taught me that trick, which I, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. you never stop learning with cooking. And that's what's so great about learning from people. Sometimes people don't want to approach me and talk about cooking because they feel like I know everything. Mm -hmm. And I do know a lot. Mm -hmm. But I, the thing that I love about cooking, and really with any hobby, once you sort of dive into it head first, 
there's so many people that know so much and it's not necessarily book knowledge it's the stuff that you learn from the previous generations and or, or from people like me I learned to cook from my grandmother who didn't use recipes yeah. and that is so hard then I wrote a cookbook not using my recipes and I had to make the stuff and measure the that, stuff that's the worst part about and it and it's so yeah. hard because I didn't have recipes yeah. for the things that I was making and I'm like oh my god people want these recipes how am I going to yeah. do this that is so hard but now I want to ask you about the, the healthy wellness bowls that you designed and you were selling at the Woodbridge Inn. Sure. I absolutely, I had one one day and it was just like amazing and it was full of all kinds of great things. How did you decide to come up with that? Well, we were seeing a trend towards bowls um, anyway, but they were usually kind of like a dessert bowl or a breakfast bowl. But what I liked about that really comes to the way I eat because if I sit down to a big bowl of one thing, I don't have that much storage, and so I get kind of bored, bored. with it. You know, I don't uh -huh. want to sit there. I feel like a chow, I mean, a cow that's eating his, you know, cut or or a horse with a feed bag on. So there's an Indian restaurant in Marietta called Vatica, and what I loved about that was there's no menu, and every time you sat down, you got five individual little cups of different something. It would be like you know lentils and beans or rice or what you know they were, but they were always amazing. But I wanted them to kind of get out of their little cups and have a chance to, you get know, together, get together. Know each other. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Which my my mother's mother, Abby Sewell, would hate. She could not stand. No, she was. Yeah, like yeah. If, if the if the banana pudding were to even be in the same zip code as the <laughs> chicken and dressing or yeah. whatever, she yeah. couldn't handle it. Yeah. But but I liked it when you know the the sauce would bleed into the rice, and that or it might already be a salad that has a dressing, but now when this little bit comes into that, so what I kind of designed was. Um, a four or five salad plate, and by salad I don't mean necessarily greens. I mean right. it's, it's the right. I do Fresh grains, vegetables, yeah, yeah, vegetables and grains, and right. uh, because everything I do, even if it's a, a roasted beet, I'm still going to dress it somehow. Even if it's just a little splash of a of a very light vinegar or a olive oil or a crank of salt, there's still going to be it's going to be um, Not doctored bland. up. Exactly. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I can't stand yeah. bland. Yeah. So um, I I just started using the sort of center of the bowl as my anchor. I would usually make some sort of a grain salad with mm -hmm. barley or um, sorghum or quinoa or even brown rice. So I'd make something out of that as the center, and then I would put you know grilled vegetables or roasted be beets mm -hmm. or um, stewed squash or or even just slices of fresh tomato or slices of fresh figs, so that you know I would have people that go you know what if I had if I had to pick these things, I would have never picked the Brussels sprouts because I thought I didn't like them. Right. But man, I was eating on this salad and one fell in there and I think, oh my God, that's really good. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of let them be a surprise. Now I would always work with somebody's health if they're allergic to something, then of mm -hmm. course I wouldn't put mm -hmm. that on there. Mm -hmm. But it was always, you know, people would say, what's on the wellness bowl today? And it's sort of chef's choice because, mm -hmm. you know, now if, again, if there's somebody knows that they just will not eat an asparagus, well then I won't use asparagus. I've got so, asparagus. Oh, I do too. Oh, oh my God. Oh, now, oh. And I found, um, oh, you like them? I love yeah. them. You I like white them. asparagus? I love asparagus. I just found the other day. But I want hollandaise over it. Well, of course, of course. <laughs> of course I, I, I just over. found white asparagus for 99 cents a pound uh, when I was wow. in Shamley the other day, and I bought them just to, just to have them for the yeah. memory of yeah, them. So yeah, yeah. Um, Germans don't eat green asparagus. They're all about the white oh, asparagus. Yeah. So, oh, wow. uh, But anyway, so the wellness bowl really came from my desire for for people to get a, a well-balanced meal. There's tons of protein in there, no meat uh, by default, but they're getting protein from the lentils or from the beans or from the quinoa or from the whole grain sorghum and because there's a lot of plant-based protein. Uh, and then I could also then take advantage of what's in season. And oftentimes mm -hmm. at the Woodbridge, we would get people come into the back door um, with, with their produce. Yeah. I mean, they got yeah. extra, and so they would yeah. say, how much for all this? Um, and I, I can't remember his name right now, but there's a this gentleman, I feel like his name's Tony, um, who grows okra and other things. And he was at the farmer's market one Saturday, and he had a few other, you know, a couple squash, a couple tomatoes, and it was pouring down rain. I mean, just miserably pouring down rain and I pulled up and uh, he said you wouldn't want to buy all this stuff with you and I said well how much for everything and he's like 30 bucks I'm like dude sold so I bought everything and then that weekend that's what the menu what was and so yeah. that's that's the kind of cooking that I love to do is I don't go to the grocery store with a list I go to the grocery store or the market with an idea, with, with an idea and then uh, but I'm not set on crookneck squash because it may not right. look right yeah. if somebody's got yeah. zucchini exactly. or they've got eight balls or whatever it is that's what I'm going to use well, um, do you like, you love to use honey, don't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. that's a... Um, my cousin, who is battling cancer right now, and we need to ask everybody to say a prayer for Amadale. Um, Amadale worked in the probate office for 40 years and retired and then went home and diagnosed with cancer. But she's going to beat this cancer, and she and her husband have honeybees. Oh, nice. And I got some honey from them, and I have to say, 
in three weeks, I ate a pint of honey. Well, it's fantastic. I don't know if you, if you can over, pint, over <laughs> honey it or not, but I put it in, instead of making sweet tea now, I make honey oh, tea. Oh, I love it, yeah. I make honey tea. It's, it's and perfect. And I just experimented with it because I'm doing a, I used to make lots of sugar in my tea. I don't do that anymore. And I do just enough honey to lighten it up yep. and to make it, and it's so good. Is honey good for you? Oh, My absolutely. Honey comes from Hill City. So and, and that's what I was going to say is that. Am I overdosing on it by doing well, it right you know, in Well, honey does affect your glycemic index. So if you have a problem with sugar, you can't just jump to honey and expect it to not. So it will spike your glycemic index. But it is a much better natural uh, sweetener. It's not refined like, like a white sugar right. is. And there's a lot of evidence saying, supporting that it helps you uh, sort of defend against uh, allergens. That's what I was hoping because right. it came from Hill City yep. and I said, you know, that's where I lived for all those years. I was hoping that it would just help me beat because my allergies have been killing me, and, 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 and I really think it's doing better. It works the same way as a vaccination in that it's it's exposing your body to small micro doses of those things that would normally, even, even goldenrod, I mean, mm -hmm. the things that would normally make you, you know, sneeze like crazy, the bees are taking that pollen and they're incorporating it into, or and the nectar from that into their into their honey. So you're getting really and truly just these tiny micro doses of that, and that helps your body build up the the antigens or the mm -hmm, antibodies mm -hmm, for those things. Mm -hmm. So, and it tastes delicious. Yeah. And you know, hers is so good. And so if good. you just, I'm um, looking at the clock, and I'm about to oh, go we have time? because we have got to share your information for people to reach you. We want folks to book an event with you. We want you to be able to come out and share your cooking techniques. Share how you battled cancer, beat cancer, didn't get depressed. You, you're not a depressed person. No, but, but at the same time, I'm not Pollyanna. I mean, there no. are days that are much harder than others for me, but I find that if it's the expression, fake it till you make it, even if I don't feel like getting up and doing something, I make myself get mm -hmm. up and do something. Mm -hmm. And by having these commitments to go and speak and whatever, it, it forces me to do it. And then by the time I'm there, I feel great because your body generates its own endorphins and, and its own chemicals, really, mm -hmm. to help kind of mm -hmm. get you out of those dark places. So is the best way for people to reach you to go to your Facebook page? I think Facebook is, is okay. always the easiest. Um, I get so many spam calls that, the, right. you know, I could put a phone number out, but it just it gets no, so much no. junk. Yeah. Um, but I it, made the mistake of getting my phone number out there because I'm on Sean Hannity's call list, and oh, my Lord, now I get every weirdo yeah, call exactly. in the world. So I'm And learning. you do. Yeah. Um, but to, to, to reach out, to message you and messenger, yeah. and then my, you want to book an event. My website is just Hans Cooks, um, HansCooks.com, and so it has all the contact information on there. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have done, I've been really fortunate to speak to a lot of great companies. Uh, I got to speak at Porsche and at Disney and at Home Depot, but it's, those are great, but it is the small groups. I just did one in LJ right before I went for surgery. In fact, the day before I left uh, for a Cancer Survivors Day and got to speak about, you know, to the, the positive effects of eating. And it's not just about the food and the nutrition. It's also about doing something and going to the market mm -hmm. because sometimes mm -hmm. you, you get in these ruts, but if you're going to the market, you're interacting with people, you're getting inspired by the ingredients, and then don't think of the cooking as a chore. It's a chance to spend some time in your own head, listen to music, put on Sean Hannity or mm -hmm. whatever you want to mm -hmm. watch. and, and uh, and spend some time in the kitchen. But before we run out of time, I do have to thank everybody because I had such an amazing outpouring of, of love and financial support because let me tell you, cancer is the most expensive hobby you'll ever have. Yeah. I mean, it is yeah. crazy yeah. expensive from yeah. parking, from hotel stays, from travel back and forth. And it actually, when we were finally allowed to come home, it was sort of, we were on the wire, how are we gonna afford to come home? But we were we were able to get a lot of um, a lot of donations and I, I thank you 100% for that, And but also, don't, it's not just me. There are other people that are, you know, I'm sort of coming out of this chapter of, of, of illness. There are other people that are just getting into it. So keep that, keep that giving spirit going. And even if it's five dollars, it, don't be embarrassed by it. I had people that would write letters apologizing. Like, don't, send you know, don't apologize. That yeah, means yeah, the world. And yeah, just getting yeah. the card means yeah, the world. So yeah, yeah. Um, I love North Georgia. Yeah. I'm so excited. He's back. He's on track, and you're going to stay super, super busy. Yeah. And we're going to hope that the next time you see him, he's going to weigh just a tiny bit more. A little more. Here, a little let more. me just rub over here and get There you go. I'll back. take it. I'll take it. <laughs> there you go. Bye, y'all. We'll Thank see you, you again soon. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>